Hello researchers, my name is Ryan and today I'm super excited to show you how to use the AI Writer inside of AnswerDisk. Now, when you click the AI Writer option on the sidebar, this is what you will see. You'll see, you'll see your previous documents and the editing that you've already done. And if you just clicked onto this, it'll probably be blank and you'll just see the add new document. If we click here, we have the option to give our document a title, we can say test, and we can also give it a description. For now, I'm just gonna say test, but you should write this out fully with what you are gonna write. So this is what it's gonna look like when we just entered the AI editor section, but you might look at this and think, huh, this is pretty empty. And unless you already have your own text that you're gonna edit, then this is indeed a little empty to begin with. So instead, I'm gonna to go to one of my previous literature reviews that I made with Answer This. I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom and I'm gonna find this edit with AI option. When I click here, it's gonna take us right back in to this little screen that we seen earlier, except we have our entire literature review now with inside of it. And as you can see, we can scroll to the bottom. We can see all the cited sources that were used here. We can also go through and look at these line by line citations. We can click on any of them and see the entire abstract. We can also see the number of times it was cited. And we of course can view the publication at the bottom of it as well. Now, going back into the screen, um, on the right-hand side here, you'll see a variety of tools that we can use. Starting off at the very bottom, we can actually view and add our documents into here um, by clicking back, and this will just take us to the screen that we had seen before. But if we click back, uh, we can keep on going up. We want have settings. So if we want to adjust the description or the title of this, we can. We can also set this to public as well if we wish. And of course, we can see when this was created and when it was last updated. Next, we have this little guide section. It's very useful, but as you're watching this video, you might not need to use this. And after that, we have the search papers option. Now, what we can do here is we can look up atomic structures, which is what my literature review is on. And when I search papers on the right hand side, we now see more papers um, here as well. And say we added a line and we wanted to cite the paper that we extracted that line from, we can simply just press add citation on the right hand side here. And just like that, the paper has been added in to our little doc that we have going on here. And additionally, if we do really like a paper, we can also save it to our library to use in the future as well. And of course we have the typical features which we see um, inside of things like the library or the right hand side of literature review section where we can extract data, export this into a CSV, change the citations and anything else we need to do here. Going on to the library on the right hand side, uh, this will be the library that you're currently on. If we wanna change the library that we're in, we can simply just click the top right here and go into any library that we'd like to extract sources from. Um, however, I'm gonna to stick to my normal library that I have right here. And we can do the similar thing where we can just, you know, go in, add citations and do whatever we need to do. Now, going on to some of the AI editing features, um, we can highlight any piece of text uh, in this document. And as you can see, um, it's been added on the top here. And this is just to show that answer just recognizes that you've highlighted this piece of text. Now we can directly enter a prompt here in order to change the writing into any way we'd like. Um, but on the right hand side, you can do the same thing with a few more additional features as well. One is uh, we can select these pre-made prompts so we can reword it, we can summarize what was being said here, or we can also custom prompt. And what this allows us to do is just type in a prompt as we would. So we can say, uh, can you expand this writing out? more and then after that we can just click generate if we want to make the text right away or if we want to add sources alongside of our prompt we can say select sources here we can then add in uh, what we want the sources to be so we can say atomic structures just to put it generally of course you could be a little more specific with this if you want as well and then of course we get the paper filters where we can go in we can change the databases that answer this. We can also select web search if we want, as well as patents or my library. And of course, adjust the journal quality 
to what we'd like it to be, Q1 being the highest quality journal, Q4 being the lower, and we can also just select all if we wish as well. And we can select the publication date of when we want papers from um, if we wish, but I'm just gonna click generate and see what answer this comes out with. And just like that, as you can see, we have our new changes on the right here, which, which we can scroll through and we can uh, choose to replace the section, which was my original intention. But if we're asking in a prompt, like make a research outline based on this highlighted text, we might want to select insert before, insert after, and you know, you can change this with whatever your prompt and answer is. But for now, I'm just going to replace section, apply changes. And just like that, answer this has went ahead. It's applied the changes that need to. Um, in respect to my prompt, we can go ahead, we can read this, and of course we can, you know, uh, change the text a little bit if we wish as well. Um, but for now, uh, we don't need to do any of that. Additionally, from this section on the left here, you'll also notice that we have sort of Word document-like options in the top. Uh, we can bold text, so if we just select a piece of text, we can bold it, we can italicize it, and we can also underline it like we would in a Word document. We can also put it in a code format, and change the style of heading. So if we wanted to make this super large, we can do that. And if we want to make it a header free, we can do that as well. Additionally, we can choose if we want to send our text, uh, we can make bullet points and add links as well as images from here as well. So great if you're compiling a literature review where you need different graphs and stuff to be, in for, uh, to be inserted. Additionally, you can copy the text directly from here. You can also save the document whilst you're working on it. You can reformat text by highlighting it and clicking here. You can also share this document with your team. If you don't have a team currently in answer this, you can simply put in their email address here, invite them to your team and invite them to view what you're currently working on. And if we click the more, we can also export this to a PDF file as well. Additionally, on the right-hand side in this AI editing bit, we also have the ability to do continue writing. And just as before, we have the source selection feature as well, where we can change the different sources that answer this uses when it makes our text. Continue on up here, we also have the ability to create a full outline to the answer. So if we wanna create an entire research outline, uh, all we have to do is put in our topic here and answer this will go ahead and insert the outline into your editor. Similarly, you can be a little bit more specific with this if you'd like. You can enter in your topic title again, uh, put in a, a description with everything you'd like in. So if you want to make timelines, if you want to make a research outline for everything that is covered inside of your research topic, or if you want to find anything else, you can include that and mention it here. You can also change the number of headings and subheadings that answer this uses as well as configure the sources that it uses when it generates your outline. And finally, if we go to the assistant part, we'll be able to see the literature review that was created and pulled from here. We can ask, also ask it follow-up questions if we want as well, uh, in order to get a little bit more data with the context of the answer that we already have. I hope you were able to find this super helpful. And if you did and wanna see more tips and guides for researchers, feel free to go over to the Answer This YouTube channel where you'll be able to see lots of videos just like this where you can learn to take your research to the next level with Answer This. Alrighty, thank you again.